Hello, this is Leanne McGlynn with McGlynn Institute Neonatal. Today we will discuss less invasive surfactant administration, otherwise known as LISA. The advent of surfactant has profoundly improved neonatal care by allowing for the survival of those born as early as 22 weeks. For those infants, the avoidance of PPV can drastically reduce the occurrence of barotrauma, air leaks, all leading to bronchopulmonary dysplasia or BPD, as well as the need for treatment of patent ductus arteriosus. Before performing LISA, you must determine the need for surfactant and if the patient qualifies for the LISA procedure. To qualify, there must be a need to provide exogenous surfactant to an infant with established RDS after failed increases in CPAP or NIPV and FiO2 requirements are greater or equal to at least 30 to 40 percent. This is all unit specific. Additionally, the neonate must not be intubated or require intubation due to poor ventilatory effort or drive or a congenital anomaly such as a diaphragmatic hernia. To perform LISA, you'll need to gather your equipment and supplies, which include sterile gloves, hair cover, and mask, 16 gauge 5.25 to 5.5 inch angio catheter with the needle removed and discarded, sterile towels, sterile tape measure, sterile marker, a 5 ml syringe, a T connector, an 18 gauge needle, surfactant with the correct dose plus 1 ml of air, a laryngoscope, and the correct sized blade. Please refer to your unit protocol for use of sedation, for intubation, and remaining on non-invasive respiratory support. Providers may consider atropine, 0.2 milligrams per kilogram IV push to prevent reflex bradycardia and decreased secretions, and a small dose of fentanyl, such as 0.05 to 1 micrograms per kilogram, given over 5 to 10 minutes. You should avoid paralytics or muscle relaxants. In addition, the use of sucrose, swaddling, and other non-pharmacologic measures are encouraged. After donning hat and mask, open a sterile towel. On the sterile towel, open the angio catheter and remove the inner needle. Discard the needle in the sharps. Next, add the sterile measuring tape and the sterile marker. At this point, after donning sterile gloves, use the sterile tape measure to measure from the catheter tip you measure 1 cm for those less or equal to 26 weeks gestational age, 1.5 cm for those 27 to 28 weeks gestational age, or 2 cm for those that are greater or equal to 29 weeks gestational age. Once you've determined the measurement on the catheter, mark that on the catheter using the sterile marker. Be sure to mark all the way around the catheter and mark, make sure the mark is easily visible as this measurement will be used as the point that passes through the vocal cords where you no longer advance the catheter further. You can also consider marking the line at the lip as well. While you are prepping the catheter, the RT or RN can use the 5 ml syringe and a 1 inch 18 gauge needle to drop the correct dose of surfactant plus 1 ml of air to ensure the entire dose is delivered. To perform LISA, you intubate while on non-invasive respiratory support. You would find your landmarks as you normally would. Once those are found, you then advance your catheter to the point at which the mark reaches the vocal cords. Once you have reached this mark, you stop advancing your catheter and remove your laryngoscope blade. At this point, the RN or RT can attach the T-connector and slowly administer surfactant over one minute, possibly slower if bradycardia or reflux of surfactant occurs, complete with the 1 ml flush of air, then remove the angio catheter. Post-procedure, you'll want to listen to breath sounds, evaluate saturations, and a possible need for a brief increase in FiO2. The RN can also check the stomach contents via gastric tube to see if surfactant was administered to the stomach. If so, you'll need to repeat the LISA procedure. There are complications from LISA. They are rare, regardless of gestational age. You can have a slight desaturation, surfactant reflux, bradycardia, and apnea. Most complications from LISA are minor, with desaturation requiring a temporary increase in FiO2 or stimulation to recover needed. 
Now it's your turn. Let us know how this video helped you in your actual practice. Looking for an NRP, procedural skills, or simulation-based training course? McGlynn Institute Neonatal has you covered. Give us a call or text at 704-728-4961 or email Dr. McGlynn at drmcglynn at mcglynninstitute.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon.